Welcome to Just Asia, HRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Indonesian corruption watchdog arrests Pakasi region and others. Pakistan releases Pashtun rights defender after huge social outcry. India's Minister of External Affairs says sex allegations are baseless. Three journalists arrested in Burma for article on financial mismanagement. Thai community protesting against gold mine facing reprisal for over 10 years. Bangladesh new digital security act seen as threat to freedom of expression. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia. I'm Alexandra. This week, Just Asia begins with Indonesia, where the Corruption Eradication Commission, known as the KPK, arrested Pakasi region, Mrs. Nenang Hasana Yasin on Sunday. She was arrested and brought to KPK's office, together with 10 other persons. They include government officials and employees of the Lipro Group. The corruption watchdog has named the Pakasi region and Lipo's operational director as suspect of bribery. The Lipo group apparently agreed to provide 13 billion rupiah for the region and her officials in order to obtain permits for the company's USD 20 billion mega projects, Mekarta. The Mekarta project includes the construction of apartments, shopping centers, hospitals, and education centers, requiring a large number of permits. Recommendations for five prevention, environmental impact, floods, garbage dumps, and burial grounds. Because the region Nenang was nominated by Goldcar Political Party, which is one of the parties supporting President Joko Widodo. Local groups believe that the reason spike in regions and governors being involved in corruption cases is linked to the upcoming 2019 elections, with politicians needing funding for campaigns. Next, Pakistani authorities detained Gulalai Ismail, a Pashtun human rights defender. On her arrival at Islamabad airport last Friday, she was told that her name had been placed on the exit control list, banning her from traveling outside the country. She was later released due to huge social outcry. Gulala Ismail is a supporter of the nonviolent Pashtun Tahavas movement, which has been campaigning across Pakistan against enforced disappearances, extrajudicial executions, and discrimination against the country's Pashtun ethnic minority. Gulala is the founder of the Seat of Peace Network and the 2017 winner of the Anna Politkovskaya Award. Gulala was one of 90 people named in a police complaint report for organizing and speaking at a PTM rally in the northwest town of Swabi on August 20th. The charges against PTM activists include unlawful assembly and punishment for rioting. Although Gulala has been released, her name is still on the exit control list and her passport remains confiscated. India's Minister of State for External Affairs, M.J. Akbar, has been accused of sexual harassment and sexual assault by several women. The revelation and accusation came as part of the Me Too movement that has engulfed India, starting with allegations against a Bollywood actor and subsequently against a young comedian. M.J. Akbar has refused to resign from his post as minister and has instead filed a criminal defamation suit against Priya Ramani one of the women accusing him. This case has caused a huge uproar in India, with many demanding his resignation and stern action against him. He was a former journalist with the Asian Age and has termed the allegations as false, baseless and wild. The Me Too movement has thrown up questions of rule of law and due process, as well as highlighting India's broken justice system. Moving to Burma, police arrested three journalists last Wednesday after their paper criticized the financial management of Yangon's government, overseen by a protege of leader Aung San Suu Kyi, executive editors Kyo Zhou Lin and Nai Min, and chief reporter Fio Wai Win were taken to court in handcuffs to hear the charges against them. They were then taken to insane prison. A case was filed against them under Section 505B 
Regarding an article about the funding behind the city's bus network, a scheme run by Yangon Chief Minister and Suki Confident Fio Min Ten. The trial could be fined and jailed for up to two years if a court rules that their story was published with intent to cause or was likely to cause fear or alarm to the public. Rights groups have criticized their detention, which comes as the latest in a long series of cases brought against the media under fact and outdated laws. A few weeks earlier, Two Reuters journalists were sentenced to seven years in jail at the end of what was widely seen as a shame trial, during which a police officer testified that they had been set up. The UN has accused Burma's government of wagging a political campaign against independent journalism. In Thailand, a new report documenting 10 years of alleged abuses against a mining effect community in Lue province was issued earlier this month by Fortify Rights, a Swiss-American NGO based in Thailand. The 90-page report notes that reprisal include judicial harassment, arbitrary detention, death threats and violation of the rights to freedom of expression, peaceful assembly and a healthy environment. In 2007, residents of six villages surrounding a gold copper open pit mine in Lue province formed a group to fight for the closure of the mine. The residents want remedies for the negative health and environmental impacts of the mine, including contaminated water supplies. Since then, group members have faced criminal prosecution for their nonviolent and legitimate activities. The report is based on over 50 interviews with eyewitnesses, government officials and others. It states that Thai authorities initiated three criminal complaints against 14 group members for engaging in protest activities last year. The company operating the mine, meanwhile Tongkong Limited, also filed at least 19 criminal and civil lawsuits against 33 Luwei residents and members of the protest groups between 2007 and 2017. One case involved a complaint against a local 15-year-old girl. Lastly, Bangladesh President Abdul Hamid approved a controversial new digital security law early last week. The Digital Security Act combines the Colonial Era Official Secrets Act with new measures empowering police to make arrests without a warrant. It replaces Bangladesh's Information and Communication Technology Act which was also heavily criticized by a journalist and human rights group. Amnesty International described the new law as imposing dangerous restrictions on freedom of expression and point to its potential to be used against opposition voices challenging the government online. For instance, Fergley defined Section 25A authorized sentence of up to three years for publishing information that is aggressive or frightening while Section 31 imposes sentence of up to 10 years for posting information that ruins communal harmony or creates instability or disorder. The introduction of the new law comes amid a widening repression of opposition voices ahead of elections later this year. National NGO Otekar report earlier this month that in September alone, 30 persons were allegedly picked up by law enforcement agencies without explanation. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on this and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia/justasia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.